How lovely is thy dwelling place, O Lord of hosts to me. My soul is longing and fainting, the courts of the Lord to see. My heart and flesh they are singing For joy to the living God How lovely is thy dwelling place O Lord of hosts to me Even the sparrow finds a home Where he can settle and the swallow she can build a nest where she may lay her young within the courts of the Lord of hosts, my King, my Lord, and my God. And happy are those who are dwelling where His song of praise is sung. Music for this week is again the lovely um, Psalm 84, How Lovely Is Thy Dwelling Place by the Northumbria Community. Welcome to the 11th of our home assemblies and I hope you're enjoying them. So we better start as we usually do. Good morning everyone. I wonder what this week's been like for you. I know some more children have been coming back to school and some are still at home. We've been getting church ready to be open again for people to come. Uh, they can come in for private prayer in church. We can't do services yet, but we can come and light a candle, which is a step forward. Have you seen Mini Messy Church on Thursdays? Every Thursday at 3.30, you can tune in 10 minutes before and then you can join in with the, the messy church activities. We've started with the Joseph story like we are in these assemblies and you can join in at home. There's cooking and all sorts of things to do. Why not come and find us on Facebook Live or we'll be on YouTube about an hour later. Do you remember last week's assembly? It was all about Joseph in the Old Testament, his amazing coloured coat. This week, Joseph finds his feet and loses them again. But first of all, let's, if there's an adult there, light a candle and focus on Jesus, the light of the world, the light in our darkness, the light of hope. And we're going to sing together a song which we had last week. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. And there's a lovely moment when we can have some thinking time and think of anybody that needs our help at the moment. Sister, let me serve you, let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey. We're companions on the road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and bend alone. I will hold the Christ light for you. In the night time of your fear 
I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through. When we sing to God in heaven, we shall find such harmony for So our Bible story today is from the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis. It's the story of Joseph and Potiphar's wife. Joseph was taken down to Egypt and Potiphar, an Egyptian, one of Pharaoh's officers, the captain of the guard, bought him from the Ishmaelites. Now Joseph was with God so that God made everything that he did prosper and he was in the house of his master the Egyptian. When his master saw that God was with him and made everything succeed that he undertook he trusted him and made him his own servant. He also made him overseer of his household and placed all that he had in his care. From the time that he made him the overseer in his house and over all that he had God blessed the Egyptian household for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of God was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. Potiphar left all that he had in Joseph's charge, and he knew nothing about his affairs except the food that he ate. And Joseph was handsome and attractive. After all these honours had come to Joseph, his master's wife tried to tempt him to be unfaithful to his trust. But he refused her, saying, See, my master knows nothing about what I do in the house. He's put all that he has in my charge. How can I do this great wrong and sin against God? Day after day, she tempted Joseph, but he did not listen to her. One day, however, he went into the house to do his work and none of the other men were in the household were at home. She caught hold of his garment and again tried to tempt him, but he left his garment in her hand and fled out of the house. She kept his garment by her until his master came home and then she said to him, The Hebrew slave who you have brought to us came to me to insult me and when I cried aloud he left his garment with me and fled. When Joseph's master heard that his wife had said to him, he was angry and he took Joseph and put him into the prison in the place where the king's prisoners were kept. So he was left there in the prison, but God was with Joseph and showed kindness to him and helped him to win the friendship of the keeper of the prison. And the Keeper of the prison put Joseph in charge and made him responsible for all the other prisoners. So can you remember, who was it that brought Joseph from the traders? And what job did Joseph do for him? And I love that phrase, all that Potiphar had to do was... Remember, it was just he had just had to look what he was eating. And where did Joseph end up? Well, Joseph had a terrible time. Thrown down a well, sold as a slave, carried off to Egypt, sold again as a slave, but he fell on his feet. Now, that's a funny saying, isn't it? He fell on his feet. 
What do you think it means if somebody falls on their feet? Well, it means that it wasn't as bad as it could have been. Potiphar saw the goodness in Joseph. Joseph worked hard, he was clever, and soon he was put in charge of the whole household. But he was also very handsome, and we heard how Potiphar's wife really liked him. She wanted him, she tempted him to betray the trust he'd been given. And she kept on tempting him day after day, and Joseph kept on saying, no. Have you ever been tempted to do something you know is wrong? Like stealing sweets from the shop or taking something that isn't yours? That's what Potiphar's wife was doing, tempting Joseph to do something that was wrong. So what should we do if somebody tempts us to do something wrong? Well, we can just say no. We can tell somebody what they're doing. And you know, we must be careful because some people try tempting us to do things that they know are wrong just to get us into trouble. You know, some people just think that's funny, but it's not. But Joseph said, no. Potiphar's wife didn't like being told no. She was quite spoiled, really. She was used to getting her own way. And when Joseph refused her, she got very angry. So angry that she made up lots of lies about him and told Potiphar. And Potiphar had Joseph thrown into prison. What a terrible time. Joseph had been so good, he'd done nothing wrong, but he was punished for it anyway. It is so unfair. I wonder if you've ever been in trouble for doing something you didn't, for something you didn't do. Have you ever been told off and it wasn't you? Do you know it hurts so much, doesn't it? Even today, some people are sent to prison who are innocent. Do you know, it, take, it reminds me of the story of Jesus. Jesus lived probably a thousand years after Joseph, but do you know he was an innocent man and they still punished him. Jesus was arrested and he was tried in a, in a mock court and he was put on a cross. He could have been very angry when they arrested him, when they told lies about him and even when they crucified him. But he didn't. Do you know what he said? From the cross he prayed, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Well, thankfully, Joseph, when he was thrown into prison, he started to find his feet again. And he did that by helping people. Sometimes life can be very unfair but we don't need to let it make us bitter we need to remember how Jesus said father forgive them for they don't know what they're doing I know somebody who was sent to prison who and he claimed to be innocent too but he used his time in prison to help other people especially he used his time to help people who couldn't read and write and he taught lots of people to read and write so that when they should come out of prison, they might be better equipped for life in the world. He turned a bad situation into a gift for other people. Do you know that's just what Jesus did on the cross? He turned a bad situation into something that would help everyone. He turned the cross into a sign of hope for the whole world. So today, let's decide that we won't be tempted to do something we know is wrong. Let's de decide to do the right thing. And if life feels unfair, let's try turning it to something good instead of um, something good for others in the way that we help them instead of becoming bitter or angry. Now I'm going to say a special prayer and I'm going to invite you to either close your eyes or to look into the candle flame. We're going to pray for all of the people we're living with. We're going to 
pray for our school, our teachers, our friends, and we're going to ask God to help us all. So Lord Jesus, you came to show us that even when life is unfair, you will always show us a way forward. Help us not to fall into temptation, but always to do the right thing. Help us not to be worried or afraid, but to know that you are always near. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now, if you'd like to draw me a picture of Joseph and Potiphar, you can get an adult to email it to me. And next week, it is the story of Joseph in prison. Don't forget Missy Church. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.